Welcome to Bro One. It's time to work. So we were there at the CrossFit Pro One. The focus today was to transfer all the knowledge of a captain that has been on the team for a long period of time to a new guy. It's a lot of stuff to do in a short period of time. So Fred is out for the season, but he's still there. He's the leader of the team. He's been the captain for many years and they're very confident with Fred around. He knows the game. He's been on the floor recently, and we also have the great opportunity to have a phenomenal athlete as Chloe that is present. So I'm very proud and happy about this. Everybody has got, got a great energy, and the comments about what's happening and not are just tripled right now. So this is the best case scenario. It goes well. We do have a lot of help. So uh, there's a lot of talking on top of each other. Everybody is excited and want it to work. We need to manage all that, but it goes well. We have great intentions and we have great knowledge going on. We're going to get it through and we're going to make it happen. How easy it is to be a professional athlete, I would start by saying that the, the four biggest payout, you know, uh, in CrossFit are around 100,000. So basically we do have, for, for example, if you're taking last year, there was like Jeff Adler that was at the top there, and then there was uh, a few other people that were below, and then the fourth, at the fourth place there, we're not talking about even $100,000 payout. So when I'm just talking about the money the athletes are making off the competition winnings. So we're talking about like the 10th place of the person that makes the most amount of money uh, on the face of the earth last year, you know, with the competition payout accumulated is around $35,000. Where are they making money, those guys, you know, to pay for their food and all that stuff? You know, it's the sponsor for, for sure, you know, and the sponsor going where they could sell. And then the United States, for example, right now have over 5,000 affiliates where the Canada is more around like 500 affiliates. So for the Canadian athletes, it's hard and there's a lot of struggle. So they really need to like the sport. The way they're making money is either by social media. So they need to get involved into that realm and it's not for everyone. It's not, not a lot of people want to get involved and want to spend the amount of time. And then the people that want to spend the amount of time, not everyone knows, you know, how to make money off that. And it's a job by itself. So for example, Canadian athletes that if we're looking at the podium last year, first person was a Canadian, second person was a Canadian, and fourth person was a Canadian. You know, so it's, there was like so many Canadian on the podium last year, but all the sponsors are from United States and outside of Canada. So it's hard for Canadian athletes uh, that is below that realm of international fitness performance to make a living. It is hard, it is, uh, and then it's it's easier than it was, but it's still hard. So uh, we, can say, we can say thanks, and we're really grateful for our Bull strength, ba for basically to be uh, supporting Canadian athletes right now. Pro One's been paying uh, by itself for a long period of time, and then now we do have uh, great athletes that are behind, great company that are behind also uh, for helping us uh, to achieve th those great moments for uh, Canadian CrossFit uh, world. As for today, we work with the warm on the uh, squat with the warm, but basically doing the first rep to uh, make it very fast. So it's a squat clean 
and then some people are taller than others and then we need to adjust to that new guy there so uh, we had a lot of talking around that thing there it went well at the end everybody had great great stuff to say and uh, with all the tips around uh, we got something great going on we also work on pace on pacing of all the different athletes uh, so we can see that uh, when we have a long training uh, with a little interval and things like that we need to make sure that you can project your energy further uh, to make sure that you know exactly what kind of energy you and your partner can put with all the movement with all the scheme of the training to be able to do the most amount of work in the shortest amount of time which is the goal of all the crossfit uh, training and the same thing for the workout in the competitions after there was the transition and the knowledge of the different like basic movement that all those athletes are doing very very often but we just need to make sure that everybody know each other and that the transition are, go are good together and that we know who can do what and when and how and how fast and then all get this together so we worked a lot on that today we hit walls so it was not that that easy uh, but we learned a lot and uh, when we learn uh, it's good it's one step forward so I'm happy about this welcome back to the world <laughs> One of, one of Philip's problem, and then everybody knows about that, is that he, he likes to go guns out blazing. So what's happening on a long training like that is, uh, you know, at the end you you hit the wall, you know, and then you have difficulty to uh, to keep up the training uh, at the pace that it needs to be kept. And then Fred, Fred called, you know, he's just like, okay, you know, uh, he went out way too hard on the first round, and then at the end, Felix had a little bit of difficulty to follow up, but it's hard for competitive athletes to just see a couple in front of them doing a certain amount of work, and then they do a certain amount of work and they need to finish together. The mindset of a competitive athlete is always, I want to finish first. And what's happening is that it's cool in the first round, you know, you're finishing first. Then on the second round, you finish it at the same time. And then you pay your fucking life on the third and on the fourth round because all that energy that you spent on the first round was not worth it and it was not put in the right place. And then Chloe also said that, you know, just like, I saw you, you wanted to go out. And then she knows as an athlete and as an individual, and that is a good thing and also something he needs to manage and work. Uh, he needs to pace himself, especially on the first rounds and on the first movement. And then we had a good chat about that. And I think he's going to remember that one. C'est bien dans l'ensemble, je trouve. Euh... C'est peut-être un petit peu de leaning forward pour Manon. C'est une petite affaire. C'est une petite affaire de rien. Ensuite de ça, pour le burpee, toi, tu trouves que c'est un bon pace? C'est un peu vite. Ils vont, ils vont, ils vont, ils vont, les... vont s'en rendre compte par eux-mêmes, d'après moi. OK. Toast to bar. Ben... C'est un peu compliqué, là. Ouais. Le pace okay. de Tristan était bon, mais le pace de Félix et Manon, je pense que c'est un peu vite, les burpees. Ben, je pense, mais on va voir. C'est rapide. OK. 20 secondes. Ici, ça devrait être bon, là. Ouais. Okay. 15 secondes. Gardez votre pince, gang! Cinq, quatre, trois, deux, un, let's go! Well, the first training what we did was the squat with the worm. So the squat with the worm is, is a tricky movement. There is little subtleties that you need to be careful when you are in team versus when you're alone. When you're in team, you gotta keep that chest up, otherwise you're gonna pull the athletes, the other athletes forward and back. You gotta make sure that even if there is people behind there, everybody's going down and up at the same time. Some people are taller than others. Some people have shorter range of motion, shorter quads. So we need to adapt and you need to know what is your place on the worm and uh, how fast you need to go relative to the entire team. And the last thing is we definitely need to make sure that you're moving at the same time. As for the second movement is the toes to bar and it was coupled today with uh, the burpee over the box. So the toes to bar, uh, the transition is mandatory. So basically when there's a toes to bar, there is speed sometime that is involved into that movement, but basically you need to cut those transitions. So you gotta be able to 
check your partner, jump, and then perform it very fast and cut those little transition time that are happening very, very often. It's a movement that you're using also as a, a transition time cutter because it's easy to go back in. So it's not like taking a bar or something like that, setting back up. You can just jump and down and take rest through this and manage your training to cut that movement a little bit more often and make sure that you have energy for the rest of the training. So those transition are mandatory. How fast you're moving through those transition was a big thing today. After the, the burpee over box, we're gonna see this at one point or the other during the season, that's for sure. Synchro, most gonna see it that, that movement as well, synchro. So it's important to make sure that the chest is touching on the floor at the same time, that's for sure. But also that your partner has the same energy as you. And then, for example, if you have a lot to do and then you just want to hold on to the face of your partner and you don't communicate with them, that can become a big problem and you can hit the wall and crash and burn. So this was a little something that we had to, uh, to put today. So after we need to play with the power snatch, so it's a, quite a heavy power snatch. So it's 165 and 115 for the woman. So 165 on the man, 115 for the woman. And then it was, in, it was important to have everything at the synchro at the top there, but making sure that also everybody could follow that pace. Everybody could lock properly at the top there. And um, at the end of that training, we could see that lack of composure due to uh, certain little problems here and there, but it's good. We identified it and then we're gonna fi fix that up. Everybody's moving bars well. Everybody's got great gymnastic, work, great work capacity. So at this point there with kind of like quality athletes like this, it's all refined. And this is what we did today. After on the second training, what we did, we played with the warm clean and jerk. We had a few problems. Uh, we tried to uh, get the warm to move a little bit more efficiently. And uh, when we're changing few things, uh, we need to adapt it. And we had great insight from Chloe, Gauvin David, and then from Fred as well. And when we mixed all that up uh, together into something uh, satisfying at the end. We had difficulty also with the placement of the girls. So the girls moved and then the boys moved also a little bit. Uh, so we're, we're still at that point where we don't know exactly who's gonna go where, at what point, and then we're trying, it's, it's trying errors, and everybody needs to get back their confidence with the new fourth wheel of the team, uh, but it's going in the right direction, and then we're getting some time together, struggling and working hard, and we're gonna get through this. We also had like some uh, interesting thing with the handstand walk, so uh, handstand walk one after the other, so you don't need to wait until the other person starts, but we need to manage how far away the other person goes, and then everybody was doing great with the skill at the end of your training. We did some interval there, uh, three rounds, and it worked well. A lot of work today on the clean and jerk with the warm. As for the rest, it was just great. I think uh, everything is dialed in on that, uh, that note. So this is what we did today.